I guess is, is that there's there's a if you have a fraction, okay, and and then you convert it to a decimal, you have to figure out is the decimal terminating or fixed, or is it or rip, I guess repeating is another one. I don't know, or um, does not repeat. Basically, it goes on forever. But we got to be careful here because because um, the repeating goes on forever. The does not re does not repeat um, also goes on forever. It, it, the idea here is is if it's repeating like point three 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 is okay, but the one on the right here would be like point you know one three five seven two eight three four six seven, five, and so on like that. There's no pattern. Have you guys seen that in class? Um, sometimes, yeah. Okay. So the ones on the left here are rational and real. The ones on the right here are irrational and real. And that, that kind of leads to the point that everything is real. All the numbers we're looking at are real, but yep. but uh, some are rational, some are irrational. But there's a dividing line. There's no overlap between them. Yep. All right, great. This eight natural whole integer rational good. Uh, what is this one down here? Negative? Is it two point two or is it twenty two? Um, that's negative twenty two. Okay. Integer rational real good. I already covered that one. Now these root ones. You really have to reduce the root. So this is really sick. Yep. And then that tells you that it's natural, it's whole, it's an integer, and it's rational. So when you reduce it, that's when you're able to make your determination about what it is or is not. Okay. So sometimes you see it like in other ways, like you might see like the square root of nine over four, which is three halves. And that, like they'll they'll give you one where you have to you have to simplify it here, okay. And now the square root of seven does not reduce, and it's a it's a decimal that goes on forever. That's why it's it's irrational. Yep. Okay. So uh, number two here. Well. A picture is really needed. So I don't know if you've seen this before, but like you start out with the natural numbers, then you you add the whole numbers, then you add the integers, then you add the rationals, then you add the irrationals, and then all of these make up the real real number system. Yeah, my teacher gave us like one of those sheets. Okay, so to answer to answer the questions here in number two, this picture really is super helpful. There's no like you're basically you're basically using this picture to decide it. So it's like and, and it, it you gotta be really careful here with the words. It's like every every natural number is a whole number, but not every whole number is a natural number. So every natural number is a whole number, but not every whole number is a natural number. Yep. Because there's some that are here that aren't aren't there. All right. So are all real numbers, all real numbers are irrational numbers. That's false because a real number could either be rational or irrational. Okay. Yep. Sometimes sometimes I want you to give an explanation. An irrational number is a real number. Yes. Yes, it is a real number. So is a rational number, it's a real number. An integer is an integer is sometimes a rational number. No, an integer is always a rational number, but not all rational numbers are are integers. Yep. Okay. So there's a bunch of these that could be written here. I mean, I can make some up, but it's it's basically you have to decide if if it's nested inside or if there could be an excluded excluded value here. All right. Um 
So yesterday I started asking some questions like, hey, do you have any story problems with integers? So rather than looking at these, let me give you, let me see if I can find, um, find what I had up yesterday for us to work on real quick. I'll throw a few story problems in front of you. That is not it. That is not it either. Well, this is taking longer than I thought, but I, I had found a couple. I thought we're good. All right. Well, I'm struggling here to find. All right, never mind. Let's just go through yours. Um, okay, so uh, let's do a couple of absolute value problems here uh, just to see where you're. Uh, give me the absolute value of seven and the absolute value of negative seven. What, what do these uh, become? Both of those would be seven. Yes, so the, the absolute value part always returns seven. But if I put a negative in front, in front Negative three. Yeah, negative three, and then negative three. So um, you got you just got to be very careful about the, the 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 difference here. Now, another thing you'll see, another type of problem you'll see here is like the absolute value of like five minus six. And what you have to realize this here is that there's what's called implied parentheses. Okay, which means you do that first, then you take the absolute value of that. Yeah which would be one in this scenario. Yes, it would be one. All right, now I I've, I guess I have some small concern here. Like these problems we're, we're looking at, they're, they're, you're, you've gotten, you're getting them all right. They're, they're not that difficult. Um, you've got the right answer here, but uh, I guess I can make up some more difficult problems or do you think your quiz will be kind of like this? Um, it'll ha probably have more difficult problems. Okay. Let's try a few here. Absolute value 7 minus 11 minus absolute value 3 minus 2, like that. Go ahead and give that a try, please. Three. So this is... Absolute value of negative four minus absolute value of one. Four minus one is three, like you said. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, we really got to find some problems here that that are a little bit more difficult. So give me a moment. I also noticed on that review sheet, you know, you said that that wasn't for you, but there was a lot of comparison problems, like comparing you know fractions and roots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is that at all um, stuff you might see on on your um, uh, on your quiz? I doubt it, but maybe. Okay. So let me just throw these in front of you here. Here's five problems. I want to know whether these are positive or negative. And uh, go ahead and, and maybe write these five down in your paper there, and then we'll we'll look at some other other problems here. Okay. All right. Okay, what do you get for number one? For number one, I have um, negative 15. Good, and the keyword there is drop. All right, I have it for yep. number two. Yep. What about for, for number, number two, two, I have 40. So maybe say plus 40, just to be really like emphatic about it. Um, 
it's time. For number three, I have negative seven. Okay. For number four, I have plus nine. Okay, and number and five. For number five, I have plus seven. All right, very good. Okay, so I did find some quiz questions here that I think would be worth doing. Um, we'll look at some of these together. I, I do this a lot with your brother. I mean, I sometimes just got to find material that's going to challenge you. I mean, maybe it'll put up some gaps. You know, we'll see what uh, what's going on here. So what I would like you to do is read this question to yourself. And if you have questions, maybe ask me and we'll, uh, we can we can look at it together or just give it a try. You know, maybe you just work it out. And it's B. It is B, yeah. All right. So why do you think you've not been doing well uh, in this class grade-wise? Like, what do you think is the biggest obstacle right now? What I've been struggling with is um, I was getting very mixed up with the signs, but now that I understand it, it's like much easier. Okay. And that could have, it could be that simple because the signs do impact basically every problem you do. So, um, Now, did you did that whole double negative thing come up yet in class? Like three yeah. minus? Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I can I got to avoid questions uh, like that. Okay, let's try another one of these kind of story questions here. A. It is A. Good. All right, let me throw another one up here in front of you. D. It is D. Good. All right. We're gonna run out of stuff to work on here, <laughs> but which is good. It means you really do understand. So let's take a look here at number nine. All right, let's take a look at this one, please. A. Yes, it is A. Do one more of these, then we'll move on to some other questions. C. Ten points for a strong game, lost twenty. Yeah, let's see, you got it. Okay, so let me look at your your. Uh, so these are. Turtle dives. Okay, so so you got that. Um, we got some of these where you substitute in values. So I guess we could try a few of those. So let me let me do that here. Let's say uh, let's say it's uh, um, x equals negative three, y equals two. And Z equals negative one. And let's say I want you to do X, Y, and then four minus X. So could you calculate those for me, please? All right. The first one is negative six. Okay. And the second one is um, one. 
Yeah, so this one was unfair because I did that double negative thing. Um, and you really haven't, and so let me look here one more time. I think I thought that one. Yeah, so you, you have done this in class, at least according to what I'm seeing here. So um, double negatives become become positives. So we should work on a few of these to get this get this clear. Um, so double negatives become positive. So let's say it's like one minus a minus one. This is really one plus one. And the analogy is, is if you say, I am not going to not eat, something like that. Well, if you say, I am not going to eat, that means you are not going to eat. But then if you say, to not eat, the knots, these end up canceling each other out. Yeah. And so that's what's going on. You're subtracting a negative. So it's like they cancel each other, each other out. Not going to not eat. So double negative always becomes, it's always becomes a plus. Yeah. All right. So it's, so it's five minus a minus three. What would that become? Uh, that would become two. It becomes five plus three. Double negatives become a plus. That's that's the whole point of what we were saying here. Double negatives become a plus. Let's try it again. How about six minus a minus two? What does this become? Eight. Six plus two, which is eight. Now, if I put a negative four minus a minus five, the double negative still becomes a plus. It still becomes negative four plus five, which is. That would still be um, one. What would this become one? Yeah. Okay, so now let, let me give you a few expressions here to try longer. Let's say it's a negative three minus a minus four minus two. So the way you evaluate this stuff is you do the, this grouping first. That double negative becomes a plus. Okay. So go ahead and evaluate this uh, for me, please. Negative one. Four, your final answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this becomes negative three plus four, which is positive one, minus two is negative one, good. So here are, I'm gonna go ahead and actually grab another one of these quiz questions I found. We're just gonna look at the answers to start out here. Um, I want you, okay, and then one more thing here before we get to that. Um, let's say it's like five minus a minus three. The parentheses can always be dropped. So it becomes five minus a minus three, which is really, five plus three. All right, so let me let me um, grab this first one here for you to try. So this, it's minus three plus minus four, but then this minus a minus becomes a, a plus. Okay. All right. So go ahead and let's try simplifying this for me, please. Negative five. As your final answer? Yes. Okay, so this is negative seven plus two, which is negative five. Good. Uh, there's a couple more here to try. So let me... Um, you know, they're just, it's easy, it's easy to just give the wrong answer. So uh, just keep going slow, slow and steady here. Three. Okay, so we have negative three plus four ends up being plus two, 
And you're right, it is three. Good. Okay, so a couple more here. Actually, you've got that down. So let's do another one of these problems here from this uh, quiz now that we've talked about what to do with the double negative. So uh, here is the question. And it says, which of the following has the same value as minus 10 plus negative three? So the first thing is to actually figure out what that is and then to evaluate each of these until you get the one that's the same as, as this. A. Is A, yes, good. Okay, um, so we're doing good on that. We got that down. So you might get a few free response ones. We might as well, we've been doing that, but let's do one more here and then we'll move on to something else. Go ahead and I give this a try, please. Negative one. It's negative one. Oh, you're doing really well now. Okay, so we've got the sign thing down. Um, I mean, I can give you more of these story problems to work on, uh, but do you have other things that you need us to cover tonight in our lesson to get you prepared for? Oh, I don't think so. I think I'm doing pretty well. I would agree. Um, if something comes to mind, I mean, we, we have 20 minutes left, so just so if you know, be on the lookout if you you know you remember something like oh yeah I should really work on that because um, right now all I can do is just give you problems to work on uh, I don't really want to give you new stuff yet okay all right so give this one a try please. Twelve feet. How did you come up with that? Um, because the lowest elevation is negative two feet, and the highest is fourteen feet. Do you typically do large minus small or max minus min? Yeah, that's what I've been. That's what I did. So fourteen minus minus two. Yeah. Okay. What does the double negative? Oh, wait, become? that would be that would be um sixteen. Be sixteen, and it's so easy to give that answer you just gave and think you're right. Um, the subtraction's always there. Double negative becomes a plus. All right. Okay, nineteen. Nineteen here. Go ahead and uh, give this one a try, please. Number C. Okay, so what I want you to do now is, and I didn't, I should have had you do this, is give me the difference between all of them, your answer is correct, but I still want this because I want to make sure that you got it for the right reason. All right, for number A, it's neg it's um four. The difference okay. between them is four. For B, it's four. Okay. For C, it's nine. All right. And for D, it's eight. Okay, very good, very good. Okay. Well done. Um. Okay, let me go see if I can find something else for uh, for us to work on. All right, here is, I mean, it's gonna be mostly these story problems here. So let's try another one. 
All right, so here's another problem for you to look at. That would be 31. Yeah, 16 minus and minus 15 is 31. Uh, so it just as important as the answer, like I don't know if you just like like said, oh, it's 31. Just as important as the answer is the work, uh, something, something to show that you are, um, you. it's a way to express what you're doing without, uh, if, even if you don't write it down, you still have to sort of express some, some thoughts here, some ideas. Okay, here's a here's another one for you to uh, to look at. Seven hundred fifty feet below sea level. That is correct. So it would be um, um, minus four fifty minus three hundred equals minus seven fifty, and then the words you said are really important. Seven hundred fifty feet. That's the units below sea level. What would be wrong with and it's going to look really similar here. What would be wrong with this? Um, because it wouldn't be negative 750 feet below sea level. Okay. So the One negative, just, yeah, it's the negative. Say that. Right. Right. Uh, we just like it's it's below implies the the negatives. That's that's why uh, that's why it is wrong. I agree. Very good. Okay. Um, I found a few of some more multiple choice stuff that would be worth doing here. All right. Um, Yep, so go ahead and uh, I guess give this your best shot, please. B. What, what, what letter did you say? D. D, yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, looking for some other questions here that... Uh, Yeah, here's a another question for us. She made a profit profit of one dollar. Okay. Um uh, what is the what is the expression though? You, it, it says write and a, write, well, I guess maybe you didn't see that. You need to write out something to get that. So I, that's 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 actually more important than the answer. I, your yeah. answer is correct, but like, give me what you. How did you? Um, what did so you I did up? eleven plus fifteen. Yeah, but it's a loss of eleven. I did oh, negative I eleven so, plus okay. negative. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's good. I, you, maybe you you add them up and then negated them, okay? Yeah. And then when I figured out that that was negative 26, then I added the profits of 13 and 14, which okay, would so, equal 27, which would equal a profit of $1. So when they say write an expression or an equation, this is what they're referring to. Like they're they're really referring to uh, something like that. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. 
Um, let me see what else here. Uh, So uh, I want you to give me the value of each of these and then tell me which one is greater and why, I guess. Yeah, that would be good. It would be A because A would equal positive nine while B would equal negative nine. All right, um, that's good here. So this one says to write the next two terms in each pattern. So they're suggesting there's something that's happening to go from negative six to negative 12, negative 12, negative six, and you, you should be able to write the next two using the same, same Negative pattern. 30, negative 36. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to do here. We're, we've, we've kind of done all that we can. I mean, I'm happy to keep, so we got another 10 minutes. I can find more questions. Is there other stuff you want us to talk about? Not really. Okay, let me, we didn't do, we should do a few more of the rational, irrational, all that stuff. So let me give you a, let me give you just a couple of those. Let's say I give you 0 0.47 negative and go back if you need to flip over the uh to the the check the all you know columns that apply to this number just just tell me which ones this is um that is a rational number that is an integer it is not an integer Ra it's not an integer it's zero zero point minus zero point four seven oh it's a rational real real good all right. Uh, so sometimes you see things like uh, we kind of mentioned here, like negative square root 64. And what you want to do is simplify before you, before you, um, to make a decision about what it is. That is. That equals negative eight. So that would be an integer, a rational, and a real. Okay, very good. Um, what else might they give you? So here's another one. They might say uh, 0 0.6666, like that. That would be one that, that you might. Yeah, that's, um, that is an irrational number. Did and you say rational or irrational? Irrational. So the thing is, because the pattern repeats, it's patterned, it's really two thirds. Now, I don't know if you're supposed to know that, but you're supposed to know that it repeats. And if it repeats, that makes it rational. And real. Okay. All right. Uh, next thing here is like, what if it's uh, the square root of 52? Is that a known square root? Mm. No. It is not. So this is irrational and it's real. How about the number zero? What does that That fall is into? a rational number, a integer, and then a whole number. A rational, a integer, a whole, and then a real. Very good. Very good. Okay. I mean, I feel like I feel like you've got this down. I I mean, I don't know how you feel about any lesson early today. I mean, I, I don't typically do that unless there's really nothing more to cover. I'm happy to find more questions. So you tell me if you think you need more practice here. Um, I think I'm actually doing pretty good. I would. I really agree here. Um, if you have time, maybe look over the notes um, for your quiz. But my guess, my guess is you're going to do really well. Um, 
So whatever was the issue, it seems to be resolved. Excuse me, seems to be resolved. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, stop there.